Greetings, my fellow Europans. Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Stationaries Europa, Episode 3, which originally streamed live on Twitch. Let me just tell you, I currently have enough coal in my inventory to power up the base for like a week. So I'm not going to push it because I don't want the doors to lock on me. As I, uh, let's just go on back. A Yoda power emoji? I do have the uh, Yoda Aang. That, that would be closer to Yoda power, maybe. All right. Power in the base is still on for now, for like seconds. Please let me cycle. Please let me cycle. Please let me cycle. <laughs> and what's in the air here? Okay, it's very breathable. Very, very breathable. It's actually, all things considered, relatively comfortable. Oh look, it's dying. So, kit battery on? Oh god, I cannot wait. Cold Jenny on. Yes! Power! So, uh, I don't have my network analyzer. But let me tell you, <laughs> that battery right now has a lot of power. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And I'm going to start charging everything up. Obviously, this thing is bleeding X into the base, so I'm going to need to filter that X out. But I'm probably going to keep the solid generator in here until the base is a comfortable temperature and just keep pulling the unwanted gas out. As that's probably a more sustainable method. My uh, my network chip is in the lander, so I have one, it's just not on me. The other thing I need to do is to turn off this, um, oh, yep, there it goes. So I have five coal left over, the kit battery basically maxed out. Because I don't want to be burning coal unless it's actually doing stuff, you know? It's 100 kPa, so it's, uh, it's earth pressure right now, just about. And most of the X is out of the air. So it's very breathable at 100 kPa. And I'll just keep filtering the air. A kit battery can get more power from a generator. Yeah, so the way this works is the generator generates uh, an obscene amount of power. And the APCs can't receive as much as it produces. They only receive like a 10th or a 20th or something like that. So you need heavy cables, which can um, carry 100 kilowatts. These normal cables can only carry 5 kilowatts. And, uh, and in that way, you'll be able to actually capitalize on the amount of power that the, um, the cold jenny produces. And I'm just going to top up my suit batteries. Once this turns blue, I'll switch. Oh, there we go. All right, the next project is going to be wind farm. Build a wind farm so that I don't have to keep burning coal. 
I will also top up my kit battery, which shouldn't take very long, just so that, uh, you know, I can easily come home and it's no problem. Yeah, it's already topped up. So this thing holds megawatts. Uh, let me take a look how much it holds. Station battery holds 3.6 megawatts of power. Very, very healthy amount. Uh, the other thing I should do is to switch the batteries for some of my tools. Oops. There we go. So now my, um, my scanner, my tablet, and my drill all are maxed out. So for me to be able to make wind farms, they're called upright wind turbines, I'm going to need 10 iron, 5 gold, and 10 copper per turbine. So I'm looking for gold, copper, iron. Gold should be really easy to do because there seems to be gold littered everywhere. Oh, okay, yep. Yeah. Just making sure my suits were ready to go. Thanks, Bunk. Bunky. <laughs> Would batteries in parallel be able to handle quicker, char quicker charge? Um, there used to be an exploit, so I'm not really sure, because I know they patched some of the parallel battery charge things that used to be a thing that you could do. So I don't really have a clean answer for you, unfortunately. So I already know where one uh, copper node is. It's over this way. It's where we found the iron originally, or the coal, rather. Wouldn't be a terrible idea for me to get um, a decent amount of coal on hand, just in case, because I am going to need to burn coal to keep the power, the lights on until I get to a point where I'm on renewables only. And even renewables only, I might need to spot generate uh, because wind on Europa. So I'll talk a little bit about different power generation methods. The two renewable ones would be easily set up. Renewable ones would be solar and wind. Um, certain planets like uh, moon and space, obviously wind is going to be a non-starter because there's not atmosphere in space around the moon. And the moon is ideal for solar because it's relatively close to the sun and the way the, um, the planet is set up there's only one axis tracking, which means that the sun goes completely over the horizon like you're on the equator on the moon. Um, here, the sun is at an angle, as you can see. It's not directly overhead, so you need two axis tracking for solar, and then also the solar potential is only 42% of what it would be on the moon, which mean, or in space, which means solar is just a lot weaker. You need... Um, over twice as many solar panels to, to generate the same amount of power as you would be required to have on uh, on the moon. And even Mars would be stronger because, you know, if you remember the solar system, it goes Mercury, Venus. So Venus's solar uh, generation would be pretty high. Uh, Earth, Moon, Mars, and then, of course, Jupiter. So Europa is not that close to the sun, and therefore the solar potential is garbage, in other words. Um, you can still do it, but then Europa also has the, um, also has storms, weather storms. And weather storms, when they occur, will tear up your solar panels, whereas they do not do damage to your wind turbines. In fact, your wind turbines generate extreme amounts of power, which can actually be a problem during windstorms. Um, because if you have, let's say you have, uh, Let's say you have 10 upright wind turbines that normally generate somewhere between 500 watts and 4 kilowatts. And then a storm hits, and then all of a sudden your wind turbines... Oh, I have the wrong tablet in there. All of a sudden your wind turbines are generating 15 kilowatts. They will burn out regular cabling. They will destroy your regular cables because it's producing more power than the cables themselves can handle. So in that situation, you have to use heavy watt cables 
or limit the amount of uh, upright turbines per low watt cables or use you know transistor or um, transformers and at this point I'm about I might be about seven days in so a storm could hit me at any time so I have to be wary of that as well The other way to do solar without the heavy solar panels is to encase them in glass, but it uh, that also dramatically lowers their efficiency because the the structure needed to encase it will block uh, some of your block the sun out. So then you're lowering the efficiency of solar on Europa from um, from 42 to probably like 30 something. Let's say 33, just for easy math then you'll need like three times the solar panels. It's doable, it's just not the route I want to go. I might at some point later on add solar to diversify my renewables, but for now it's going to be wind. Now wind is variable too, sometimes the wind isn't blowing, so you need to have enough power storage, and this is true on Earth, right? Like, the sun's only out 50% of the time, and the wind's not always blowing, so... If you're going to rely on renewables, you need a lot of power storage, which is really the bottleneck of renewable energy. Um, luckily, Stationeers has a very affordable battery system, whereas in real life, that's just not the case. Batteries are really inefficient in IRL. Man, this node has everything I wanted. It had gold, and now it has copper. So I think what I'll do is I will get six upright turbines on um, as the initial push, and then I'll, I'll aim to add to it. But after I get six upright turbines, I'll be able to, for the first time ever, poll you guys as to what to work on. Maybe. I say maybe because it's also possible that I'll have a... Um, an urgent need for fresh water. I think that is, uh, that's gonna be another, uh, big hurdle to pass. It's a, it's a relatively easy hurdle to, to leap over, but that's gonna be a requirement soon. I think I'm too far from the scanner now. Yeah, I dug so deep. Yep. <laughs> Glitch is absolutely right. In the wise words of uh, Rocketworks, the developer, there is no kid gloves in this game. Everything is difficult. Because they want it to be. Some things are just, like, unnecessarily difficult, I would say. But, whatever. Well, let's head back. I have uh, 119 copper, uh, 95 iron, and 39 gold. So that will be enough for... Six, actually. Now, uh, let's go ahead and use this furnace to smelt some of the other metals that I have for mostly for speed whoa did the oh I had a uh, iron from previous iron could go through an arc furnace really quickly but it is not so efficient to put iron or any other metals. So using a furnace like this is definitely faster and doesn't require power. And I just have an open mold here. Let me put the gold through. And turn this off. 
So the open mold means as soon as it's melted, it just funnels right through. And I am smelting like gangbusters now. There. It's all the ore that I had. I don't even have space for it all. So I'm going to toss some of it in the airlock. So it doesn't float away. I went from uh, starving and dehydrated to drowning in success pretty quickly. Not drowning, necessarily. I'm still eking out in existence, but I feel better at least. Okay. Um, stick everything in here. Kit battery is still four fifths. Switch out my suit battery, top that up. Upright wind turbine. Oh yeah. And now we're talking. It is negative five Celsius and breathable in here. Long-term heating solution is likely going to be on electric, electric heaters or uh, filtering outgassed carbon dioxide and oxygen from the furnace, mixing it in with um, the atmosphere. So the super hot oxygen and carbon dioxide from the furnace mixing with the um, atmospheric um, the atmospheric uh, oxygen will produce a somewhat temperate result. But heating is hard. Long-term heating is, is the big question mark uh, on this biome. Definitely. So six is a rather arbitrary number for uh, upright turbines. The reason I'm doing six is, um, well, it's really straightforward. That's what a small cable can handle, but I'm probably actually gonna make these turbines with uh, heavy cables instead so that they're scalable. Cause on heavy cables, I can put like a hundred of them. Whereas the small cables, I can only put like six. Actually, before I start printing all those up. I want to get the iron out because I have another project in mind. So over here on the auto lathe, I want lockers. Make myself some two lockers. So I can start storing things more easily. Would there be any way to use the heat from the furnaces without it killing me? Yes. Yep. What you could do, there's a lot of ways to use heat like that. Um, the way I think this is probably simplest is to put your furnaces in a room that you hypergenerate, and then you run your oxygen, you run your atmospheric pipes through that room with radiators so that the heat from the... Um, the heat from your furnace can radiate its heat through radiators into your, your atmospheric pipes. That would, that, that could be one way to heat up too. It'd be care. You'd have to carefully balance it though. But yeah, that would, that would be doable. Absolutely. So now what I'm going to do is, um, He's out the back of the base here, set it up so that I can run a heavy watt cable out to wind generators. And I'm going to want a lot of heavy watt cables in order to get that done. It's also... Temperature low. Hey, temperature low. It's not temperature critical now. 
I'm very low on uh, water. So as soon as as soon as this project is done, I'm probably gonna want to um, find some ices and build an ice crusher. Now, one of the things that um, I'm aiming to do is keep the base warm enough that the batteries won't automatically drain. Because one thing you'll see, see this blue indicates a full battery? Uh, because it's housed in a, in a cold room, it will start to drain on its own. Which is uh, obviously unwanted. But hey, we have a locker now. Uh, another thing that I'm going to want is iron sheets. So that I can, or iron frames, so that I can build the, um, build the turbines on something. Actually, I don't need iron frames, I need the sheets, because I believe I have leftover frames outside. I think I only have two iron sheets outside, but uh, a bunch of iron frames. And it's sunrise. Normally I would try to do my mining in sunrise, but I don't know if I'm going to be mining today. That's probably enough. Turn everything that I'm not using off. And let's get the wind farm going. Is there a scenario where you actually need to upgrade to steel frames? Not really. Steel frames are a little bit tougher than iron frames, but for all intents and purposes, iron is fine. Basically, the concept is if, um, if the pressure... Yeah. Basically, no. Uh, the The reason why you would use steel is steel's a little cheaper. Um, you can get, per gram of steel, you can get more frames and sheets out of it than you can do iron. But because I have a very limited amount of steel, I'm not bothering with uh, steel at the moment. Because steel is more precious to me as a, you know, a, a material. So I'm going to start my um, wind farm here, rather than right up against the base so I can walk past it. And I don't think I'm going to have enough cables for this, but we'll see. Definitely not going to have enough, but almost. I'm just shy of one cable. Let's print one more cable. Does height affect it? No, but I believe that it has to be outside. Whether on, uh, on planets or ubiquitous, it happens everywhere all at once. Unless it's... It might not work if you're deep in a cave... I'm not sure about that, but I do know that um, inside, obviously, is not going to work. Now, the other uh, big bottleneck that I foresee is I have not yet found um, ice, drinkable ice water. You do start off with... Um, a canister of water, but it's not going to take me very far. I'm going to need to find ice relatively soon, or I'm dead. 
I'll dehydrate and die. And I'm dehydrating right now and I don't even have enough water. I barely have enough water for like another day or two. So uh, before you're able to vote on the projects, um, that is going to be the next hurdle for me to tackle. Give puppies a treat. Surely. Dude. Alright, so let's um, update the project. Set up. Hydration. Very, very simple. So, empty, 13%, 100%. So I do have one that's 100%, one that's 13%. So I'll bring these in with me. And then I have uh, this water canister that I can't drink from, but I'll bring that into the base and I'm gonna set up ice crushers. I'm also gonna start to bring other things into the base uh, that I might want later on and storing them in my, um, in the locker in there. So like iron sheets, plastic sheets, that kind of thing. Uh, network analyzer would be really good too. So let me grab the network analyzer over the um, over one of the extra tapes uh, duct tape is to patch holes in your suit so this is producing about 370 350 watts it's very variable but um, as long as I have a lot of power storage when it's spinning I'll store it and then when it's not spinning I can draw down from the battery oh these would stack wouldn't they whatever Wow, this is still pretty hot. Hot enough to melt uh, solder, maybe. The blue rocks around the base, some of them are just like um, terrain doodads. So if you go in here and get rid of terrain clutter, those little like bumps are gonna disappear because they're not actually resources. Just generic rocks for map design, exactly. So, what I need to do is set up a way to hydrate. So, I need a water bottle filter filler here item kit water bottle filler I don't believe I start with one so that means that I need to move iron copper and silicon I don't yet have silicon I need to go smelt that So let's go smelt that real quick. Oh, and before I do that, open the helmet and uh, and drink the water that I have available to me and eat. Empty water bottle can go in there. At this point, I could probably actually turn off my suit when I'm indoors uh, because I... I have a breathable atmosphere inside. But I'm not too concerned about that because I have enough power to keep my suit on. One of your favorite games on one of your favorite planets? Yeah, Europe was fun. Europe was definitely a lot of fun. All right, I don't know if this is going to be hot enough for silicon. I can always add more fuel. No, it's not hot enough. And a few combustibles. It's 
the wrong ratio, but whatever. No, I think I'm going to need to outgas. I'm going to be lazy and just add a lot more volatiles. That should probably work. What's ended up happening here is the... Um... No, I'm going to need to outgas it. Okay. What's ended up happening here, and with the Atmo an Analyzer I can actually show you, is there's so much non-combustibles in this. It's mostly CO2 and X, which doesn't combust, which means I need to vent it out. Yes, and I can do that. I think. So the output is left. So if we turn that vent on, it will start pulling air out of the. Uh, out of the furnace, but because I'm impatient, I'm just going to smelt this with the the arc furnace. Oh, well, it just stoked up. I pulled enough of the garbage gases out of there that it just got hot. Just by chance. Cool. Well, I don't think I'm going to be able to find ice at night. So I'm just going to set up all of the infrastructure in order to melt ice into breathable um, or into drinkable And I'll go mining tomorrow for ice. Remember the cant. So this is the water bottle filter. Where do I want to place this? Maybe over here. And I'll stick this... Uh, right there. All right, the next thing I need is the ice crusher itself. So this thing will crush ice into water and gas, or liquid and gas, but there's only one liquid. So water and gas. And I'll stick this here. I'm actually going to pull the filler off the wall and have it float but maybe float on the other side so it's not blocking the locker. You'll understand, because uh, I don't have insulation. I don't want to use insulated pipes. Uh, I don't want it to share a wall with the outside because it will uh, make the water really cold. Then I also want a canister holder, which is here, liquid canister holder. And that's going to hold the liquid canisters here, which have water in it. Just be careful not to overpressurize. Why is it called an ice crusher if it melts? Because it can crush other ices too. It, it crushes ice into pressurized liquid or something. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to stick these above. It's going to be ugly, but I don't really care about its aesthetics. So there is the liquid. I'll maybe lower than that. Well, that's certainly weird. Ah, oh, I'm stuck. Okay, that's not gonna work. That's fine. And that allows us to stick the canister in here. Now this canister, the uh, uh, what's in here is should be temperate, 16 degrees Celsius. One thing to note is uh, when water is above boiling or below freezing, it will not fill uh, at all. It doesn't work. 
So when we crush ice to drink it, it will crush it and it will be too cold. So that's something that you have to consider uh, heating that up. So then let's make some liquid pipes. And also I should build the ice crusher at some point. I can probably move this APC. <clears throat> I only stuck it there because I didn't have storage at the time. Uh, this will be easier to do when the ice crusher is actually built. So let's build it. Also note that I'm using a, um, I'm using my smelter indoors, so it's going to outgas. So I want to show you that. Eventually I can get uh, an electric um, welder, but right now I have only, I have a tiny bit of N2, but mostly CO2 and O2. And then, as I use this bad boy... There it is. We should detect the presence of X and and H2 as a result of uh, using the welder. It's such a small amount that I don't really care. Um, I'm not going for perfect right now, but it's something to note for later that, you know, you don't want to be using a, a welder indoors if you breathe it in. I totally ran out of cable coils. Print some of those up. So in the back here, you've got... Uh, oh, I actually will show you something. So if I'm not sure which output is what, I could go to the ice crusher and look it up. For which is gas and which is liquid, but I also don't want an infinite amount of cables here. Or using all my copper for cables. Breathing in welding fumes is perfectly fine. You do it all the time, says someone that has breathed it in. <laughs> oh. Glad I'm not your lungs. Alright, so that, that's plugged in now which allows it to turn on. So there's a few things that you need to consider um, coming into this, is that the ice crusher will, so the liquid is on the bottom here. You can just see the valve looks different. Uh, the ice crusher needs to be vented as well. So that's, uh, that's an important thing to note for later. And I'll probably end up moving things around uh, to accommodate So normal ice, when it is crushed, uh, outgasses um, nitrogen, which can be used as propellant or something like that. So we'll be setting it up so that we capture that for nitrogen. And then I also want to have a, a volume pump to be able to pull liquids out of the ice crusher. So I'm going to put the volume pump in this spot here. And then everything else, I have to just finish the plumbing. Alright. Now, the liquid canister and the water bottle filler are connected. So there we go. I can refill my water. But there's a very finite amount. Oh, actually, this uh, liquid canister is now empty. So we only ha really have a few days of water left. There's nothing left in the pipe network, so everything went into these water bottles. So, ticking. Ticking, ticking clock on that. So let's finish that setting up the ice crusher so that it's actually functional, and then go get us some uh, ices, because it's about to be daytime. So I want a liquid volume pump, and then a regular volume pump, a, um, 
The gas one? Nope, that wasn't correct. Then I want a gas canister. The gas canister will hold the excess nitrogen and I can use it as a propellant. And then I want a canister storage. Sometimes it clips weird through the walls, so make sure you have room to print the thing. do. Looks weird, but it will work. I'm not trying not to block the locker. Um, I don't recall if I have pipes back out. Yeah, I have some pipes. I could see them. So let's grab those pipes and use them up first. Hey, Chen. No. It's been going good. Oops, wrong filter. I'm down to two carbon dioxide filters. Not a worry. And as the sun rises... I need to use the daylight to try to find ice, drinking ice. So I'll be on that in just a second. Also would like to start moving everything out of this lander. So every time I'm out here, I will grab an armload of stuff and move it inside. One big thing that's going to hit me is if I ever die, on stationary difficulty, I spawn naked. So, uh, a future task of mine to hedge against permanent death is to build myself a spawn point and a spare suit and tools, which is really expensive. Alternatively, I could save scum, but, you know, I bet I can guess how you feel about that. Hmm. There's not really... Uh, all right, I'm going to move this canister and canister holder. So I can put the... Um, the volume pump somewhere more convenient. I'll probably end up moving the locker to against the wall like there. I don't like that spot. Maybe I'll move the locker completely away from this and just have this be the hydration area. God, there we go. Eventually. Now, is that going to be annoying to trip over? Probably, so maybe I'll have it like this. Now, I'm emptying this out so I can move the locker, but I'll probably go mining first after I hydrate.
There, that's not so bad. I just have to wire this thing up, but, uh, all right, let's hydrate real quick. And then... Melt the ice after I wire it up. So what do I need with me? I guess I am putting this stuff away. Helps to put it away just because I don't want it to blow around and uh, go out the door and then get destroyed in a storm or something like that. Some of it is junk, but some of it I need. So the ore scanner I'm keeping. But this stuff can go. Okay. We're good to move. Water ice, let's hope we can find you. Mine for water. I also hope that I don't have any uh, storms coming, because um, that could be really bad. Yeah, I'll probably end up changing the layout of these pipes to have the capacity to have a heater. So that's probably not the final... Um, the final configuration. Now, I think my best bet... Oh, man, it's like the train just ain't rendering. My best bet is to try to physically spot it rather than to find it on the surface. Or, um, find it under underground. So I'm just going to be moving around. And what it is, it's like a... It's a pale blue... Very smooth... Ore. So I'll check the other side of this mountain, because this is the direction I haven't been. I know that uh, behind me is somewhere I've traveled a lot, and have not found much of anything so far. I might also do a quick save and load, because I feel like the terrain just isn't rendering for me as much as it should be, so let me save this, um... Europa 1. Check my settings. Yeah, these are maxed. Well, save and load. Doesn't hurt. Yeah, this is basically the opposite of last series, exactly. It's super cold. And it doesn't have a lot of ore density. Vulcan and um, Venus has really high ore density, and Europe is kind of on the lower end of the spectrum. Oh, that looks terrible. There, it's starting to fill in. Yeah, um... I think the save and load helped in more ways than one, because when I exited, I absolutely did not see this coal. That coal was not here. And I load back in and it's like, oh, coal. Game is not exactly stable, even on the stable branch. That's right, Dean Hall. Shots fired, coming your way. So I'm mining this coal just because I'm... Um, my base is almost entirely coal reliant. I just have a little bit of wind. And if I don't end up burning this coal for um, for power, I can always make steel out of it, which is a resource that you need a lot of. So that's good. So I live on the other side of that mountain. I gotta keep, uh, keep my track of my head where I live. And if you guys can help me out so I don't get lost, that'd be great. Nickel! Oh! 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 That looks like ice. This looks like ice. Other beard! Thank you for the bits! Nah, it's silicon. I'm gonna spend the second to get nickel, though. Because, um... Nickel is required in a whole bunch of alloys that I'm gonna need soon. And silver. So those are the other two that I'm looking for. 
is nickel and silver in um, in high amounts. So silver plus gold makes electrum, and then I'm also gonna want lead, which I haven't found either, to make solder, and then I'm gonna want constantin and envar, which involves nickel. So nickel I'm gonna need more of than lead and silver. And, elect and all those materials allow me to make better stuff. Need to hit the scan. Come on, I scanned. I literally just pushed it, dude. God. Fussy. Or scanner, could you work? <laughs> what is going on? Scan! Uh... Yeah, I don't really know what's going on. It's, uh, it's fussy. Okay, uh, and I guess I'm vision mining only, because the game's just like, ha ha! In details, I have all the information about what branch, what mods, etc. This might be all the nickel I'm getting, though, which is kind of a crummy vein. Oh, here it is. Take the battery out and put it back in? Yeah, maybe. Maybe I have to do that. At least I'm up to 50 nickel, which is good. Thank you for tuning in to Stationeers Europa, which originally streamed live on Twitch, April 7th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below, but please keep in mind that I played with the no backseating tag enabled, so I'm not really looking for gameplay mechanic suggestions. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams, as well as links to Discord and Twitch. If you'd like this series and want more of it, make sure to vote for it when it comes up in the polls. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel. I'll catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell 